Ryan Stevens here from Game Trailers. I'm here with Paul Wedgwood, uh, the CEO of Splash Damage and the game director on Brink. Um, you're going to show some cool stuff today, right? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Take it away. Cheers. Well, you know, uh, Brink, it's a brand new title from Bethesda Softworks, uh, designed and developed by my studio Splash Damage in London, England, and scheduled for release on the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and the PC. Uh, what we're going to show you today is some footage from the game uh, that we're showing here on the uh, E3 show floor. So we're really pleased to be back here this year. Um, and we're starting out with our new uh, uh, character system. Now, in Brink, you can maintain up to 16 different characters simultaneously. Every one of those guys is modified and maintained with inside the game, so they're not pre-created. You can zoom right in on things like the face, change out things like face textures, the jackets and armor that you're using. You can drop into those components and make changes to their properties, have facial scars, tattoos, all kinds of cool stuff that really creates just a completely unique and distinct look for yourself when you're playing online. Now what's cool about the idea behind this is that, you know, when you've played through the game, let's play through, you played through the whole thing, you know, as a single player experience. When you get to the end of that, that the game isn't over. Brink has full drop in and out support for up to seven friends to join you at any time too. And you enter that multiplayer game with all of those same abilities and cool items and gadgets that you've unlocked. So like here we had the perk system and the idea behind that and weapon customization too is that you can just really get into every single element of the game and make really cool modifications. You can take your guns and add things like, you know, uh, red dot sights, scopes. You can put things like silencers and uh, muzzle brakes on the front. So like you can endless, endless possibilities. Absolutely, yeah. Front grips that stabilize the weapon. You can even modify things like your magazine attachment. You know, if you're hardcore, you like to use iron sights and burst fire, but you can have big drum magazines if you just want to spray and pray. <laughs> so the idea, of course, behind all of this stuff, though, is that it's useful in the game itself. And Brink, first and foremost, is a shooter. It takes place on the Ark, which is this immense artificial floating city built at sea as part of a contemporary green vision, but now existing around 2045, it's lost contact with the rest of the Earth and it's become the focus of this isolated conflict. In essence, it's the brink on, civil, uh, on the brink of civil war. Uh, what we're showing off at the E3 stand this year is Reactor. Now, of course, there was never meant to be a fusion fission reactor based on the Ark. It was a green, sustainable vision of the future. But when all the refugees started arriving, they needed power and they needed to be able to house the people. And so they started developing this project. Now, it's on the northern side of the Ark. So people that have seen Container City, they'll have seen all the shanty slums and the favelas and everything to the south. This is in the luxurious end of the Ark, where there's a lot more research that's gone on. You know, kind of a world where you had loads of academics and commercials. And we're joining right now on a mission. Essentially, what we're trying to get done is to hack into a big display panel so that we can shut down these big turbine fans to get our squad through to the other side. Now, in Brink, you can play any combat role that suits your preferred playing style. So if you want, you know, as we're watching here, it's a guy playing the operative. This guy can use stealthy moves, so he can disguise as the enemy. He can sneak in behind enemy lines, hack into computers, open back routes, that sort of thing. And as we saw, he got buffed by his medic, but he can pull out his PDA and he can start hacking into this device to complete the objective. When you complete objectives, big things happen, like in the case here, shutting down turbine fines, fans that allow you to get your entire squad through. Now, if you want to, you can also play things like the soldier class. He runs and guns, places heavy explosive charges, destroys big objectives to help his team make progress. You can play the engineer, which is more of a supporting role. You know, putting down things like defense turrets, planting landmines, uh, buffing your teammates' weapons and that kind of thing. The great thing about the, uh, the game is that when you're in the battlefield, we have these command posts that we're looking at right now. And the idea behind these is that you can change combat role and weapon loadout on the fly. So those weapons that we customized beforehand, that was the Carve 9 submachine gun, once you've customized that with scopes, red dot sights, and so on, you can then go into the game, pick it up from a command post at any point, and it's there waiting for you straight away. Now, what the guys are trying to achieve right now as part of their squad is to finish the second half of this mission. Now, the goal is to destroy the reactor. You know, as far as they're concerned, if they don't take out the reactor, you know, if they don't get what they want, which is a, a fairer distribution of resources, then they're going to destroy the art for good. And he's picked up a mission now to destroy the reactor. So playing as a soldier, he carries this big, heavy, explosive charge. But he's supported by his teammates. So you've got medics running around that are giving out health, helping people revive each other. You can also use a great new system, and it's called Freedom of Movement. I don't know if you've heard about that already. 
it's kind of that kind of mirror's edge sort of stuff we've seen. Yeah, kind of. I, I guess what we've done though is really advanced things. The system's called SMART. It stands for smooth movement across random terrain or rough terrain. And the idea behind it is just to remove those kind of artificial and frustrating constraints. You could just vault straight over a barrier because you could do in real life. If you run up to, you know, a wall that's only this high, you know, you're a super fit soldier. You should be able to climb over it. But in our past shooters, you couldn't do. And the great thing about this is that when you're looking at an area, so like here, the guy's trying to get through and, and get through to the you know, heavily defended area where the reactor is, you can look back and look for other routes that you can take through. So SMART allows you to make tactical choices about the way that you want to play the game. You're no longer just constrained to kind of running and gunning. And this is important too, because in Brink, you're not on a minecart kind of witnessing can cinematics. If you want to go climbing up over these servers, jump onto an air vent, and hang out around the other side, and try and find some alternative route to get through, you can do. While you're doing it, you can also support your teammates too. So, you know, right at this point, we've got Richard Jolly on the right-hand side there who's providing fire support. Well, you know what? As a soldier, you can give him ammunition. He's Sharing a medic and he can give you health. So if you buff each other, you can work together better as a squad. And in fact, when you buff other players, it's a hell of a lot less expensive than buffing yourself. So in essence, what we do is we reward you for making the game fun for other people. Now up ahead we can see the big reactor. We have a dynamic mission system. Here we can pull up a mission to destroy the reactor. We could guard the plant location, resupply someone, capture another command post. There's always a bunch of cool things you can do at any given time. The mission system is fully dynamic, so it will come up with something cool for you to do no matter where you are on the battlefield. It takes into account the combat role that you're playing, the status of all of the objectives, the tools and gadgets that you're carrying on you, and it will give you a core mission. Now as a soldier, you're carrying the heavy explosive charge. This is a pretty difficult place to defend, so I've been incapacitated, but I'm thrown a revive syringe by my medic friend, which I can use to inject myself and get back on their feet. Now what you can do is plant the bomb. Now you just run up and hit square, like on a PS3 controller, you can see yourself in third person with your fully configured character, get a bomb planted, and now of course the goal here is just to defend the location until that bomb goes off. The, really the idea behind the game is that irrespective of whether you're playing single player, you know, just at home on your own, or if your friend comes online and wants to play alongside you, and so you can just drop straight into your game. You don't have to go into a lobby first and wait for everybody to be present. He can drop straight in and play alongside you. And later that evening, if you want to, you can open it up and just play against a whole bunch of strangers. Strangers with candy? Well, you know, the idea behind it is really just to give you freedom, freedom to move the way that you want to, to play the combat role that suits your preferred playing style, to go where you want and to use the tactics that you choose and ultimately achieve objectives like this where you've actually got the bomb planted on the core reactor. And that's Brink. Can I ask real quick, how random is the random ter ter uh, terrain? Well, I mean, the idea is that when we started working on this game, we had two constraints. First of all, players who felt like they couldn't move properly, and then level designers who couldn't put a load of level design content into a map because tables, chairs, they get in your way. When you're running along, you know, you stop on a table, you can't even see it because you can't see your feet. So it seems silly to kind of punish you for a lack of an interface, right? The idea behind Smart is you just press your Smart button and you can jump over tables, chairs, climb up over containers. So people can check out on your site, you know, on GameTrailers.com there's some great footage of Container City showing Smart used in that environment and now of course we're showing it in Reactor 2. Thank you for showing off Brink, it looks really good, uh, I hope we can see more real soon. When yeah. can we play it? Well, uh, it's scheduled for release on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC in Spring 2011. Awesome, thanks for coming. Cool, thank you very much. Cheers.